Gentlemen, oh, this is a duo, baby. <laughs> Bright and this, early on the left coast. This is a duo, baby. Johnny, you may not be used to simply ravishing, but this is a must every morning for All Rise right here. And let me tell you something about being ravishing. These two men right here are ravishing, damn it. You hear me? Let's go. Oh, yeah, baby. What a way to start the morning. I got my 4Q in the cup. Ooh. Ready to go, baby. Get that caffeine flowing. Get that caffeine flowing and tell yourself. <laughs> there it is, baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get right into today's show. We are here with the one, the only, Johnny Lasagna. What's going on, my guy? What is up, guys? Glad to be here bright and early on the left coast. It is 8 a.m. I was about to say, man. Johnny, <laughs> he, putting in the, he putting in the work this oh, morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. look, folks, you guys better be smacking that likey and hitting that oh, damn yeah. Let's this go. morning. Because my man is up bright and early to make sure that he is here for you guys, okay? Just Oh, yeah. Good saying. times, man. Just Super saying. excited. Haven't been on All Rise yet. Happy to be here with you bright and early. Um Getting it cracking, getting real close to the season starting, so uh, very oh, excited. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the show right here, folks. Everybody knows our Yankees morning show. This is it right here. Connor O'Neill immediately with a super chat this morning says, Good morning, Johnny. Where is the bunny? Everybody Man, loves Bunny Williams. I got to I gotta grab him before the show and have him off to the side chilling because yeah. if you expect me to catch him running around this room right now while I'm here on the camera, it ain't going to happen. But. Is it really that hard? Like to? I mean, not really. But I mean, for me to get up right now and go grab him, yeah. I mean, he might. It's be. not like catching a damn chicken, like rockets. Yeah. 
No, no, it's not that hard. <laughs> but he's when like grease lightning, kid. <laughs> <laughs> but if he's out in the middle of the living room or something, and he's yeah. doesn't want me to go grab him, I mean, he's he he's gonna be tough to grab. So uh, okay, all right. It depends all right, on how big the room is, but yeah, he's Bunny Williams. Let Bunny Williams be. He's chilling. He's having a good time. All right. <laughs> Who we got up in the chat today? Let's 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 say hi to everybody. We got our we got our brother Mario Gomez in the chat. Saying oh man, so. Wait, he said, oh, wait, smacky to smacky, hitty to hitty. Okay, <laughs> that's a little different. Okay, we got Jeff J, Desiree Conrad, Anthony Medina, Kev Boogie, what's going on? Mr. John Brophy, what's going on, Brof? What is up, Brophy? Kyle Millay, uh, we got Trap Queen in here, okay? We got the Trap Queen, okay? The Trap little, Queen is trap up queen. in the morning. Ra Thompson, we got Tina Eddie Snaps. Okay, Eddie Snaps because he takes pictures. Okay, that's why his name's Eddie Snaps. Okay, <laughs> Johnny's. We got We're gonna get Johnny on the okay stuff. All right. I, okay. I'm telling you guys a lot. He's gonna be on the okay very very soon. But yeah, we do got um quite a bit to talk about today. Uh, first and foremost, I I didn't we didn't plan this, but I just saw this tweet. Johnny, uh -oh. and I, I, I have to put this out here because... Let's see it. Let's see it. This is Randy Miller. And I, oh, I'm, no. I'm so sick of this frigging guy. But but oh, here no. it is right here. I'm going to read this to you guys. I was also warned that the Yankees will have to stay on him to keep Soto from slacking when he's doing something other than hitting. They said at 25, he's still a young player and he loses focus at times. I was told Soto won't run everything out. He'll get lacks of days to go on the bases and in the outfield. Come on. I have never seen a guy that obviously <laughs> is like, I don't know if this guy is working for somebody in the Yankees organization and they just give him bullshit or, or I don't know what it is. But to even tell us that the Yankees of all teams are going to stay on a player and keep him in line after what Come I've on. seen since 2018. Come on, man. You must be one batshit crazy. And two, why the negative shit towards Soto out the it's, gate? He hasn't done that. What has he done? Some, I mean, it's it's some sick shit if there's someone within the Yankees organization who's feeding him this information. That's what I'm trying saying. To... Like, like, where is he getting this stuff from? That's what I really want to know. <laughs> is is it Cashman trying to get the price down? Is like what, Already? What, what are we Already what are we, we doing, doing here? We already know he offered Judge what 214 or off the bat when he was looking for a contract. So right. I mean, if, if th this is just a sick joke, man. Leave leave Soto alone. The guy's a generational talent. He plays 162 games a year. Um it's it's starting to sound kind of like Robinson Cano stuff. He's lazy, exactly. he's lackadaisical, he's not ready to show. He's 30, he's, he's you pencil him for 30, 100, a 900 OPS, and he's gonna play every game. Like just stop yep. complaining. Yep. It's just unbelievable to hear that Brophy says that it doesn't see it just seems like he doesn't like Hispanic players because he does do this often. It is kind of weird. I'm just Brophy's throwing shots out there. Look, He's... but I ain't gonna sit here and discredit <laughs> Brophy because I've uh... seen Randy Miller's stuff and it it does kind of feel that way at times. Yeah, uh, his credibility is shot and this too. And I mean... that. I'm just like, I'm just like, like you said, who in the Yankees one is doing that? But then two on top of that, the bigger issue I have with this is the why. What yeah. is the why behind this? And on top of that, has Randy Miller ever called out the Yankees management? Have they ever called out? Has he ever called out Aaron Boone and said, why is he not holding these guys accountable? Why do guys that don't even run the ball out and they're not benched? Or even the time when he did it with Donaldson, that was the funniest thing ever. And we he had, had that. The, he's going to be benched. Then he comes out and he goes, oh, he'll be playing again very soon. He's a very good ball player. Right, and and you had that report come out, I think, in the offseason where they, the Yankees wanted Boone to be more of a disciplinarian, Correct. to be tougher, to be Correct. this and that. I mean, come on, man. If if Mr. Milk and Cookies after after a game is, <laughs> is after a bad loss is going to be out there holding Juan Soto accountable, right. stop it, dude. Yeah, my like, ass, that's going to happen. Ridiculous. But, go, go sit in the nap-nap room and take a timeout. Speaking of, speaking of the the – cookies and cupcake stuff. Hirsch had a great <laughs> comment yesterday. I'm kind of, I, I'm not quoting it exactly, but I think he said something along the lines of the toughest choice Boone ever makes is what topping to put on the cupcakes and cookies. <laughs> the warm milk milk and the chocolate chip cookies or the sugar cookies or those soft, it, soft cookie cookies from Walmart. I mean, I don't know. He's Mario, Mario, as you guys mm. saw on um, the last vlog, he got Boone's attention in Tampa. Really? I wasn't there. I wasn't there at the time, but if he looked our way, you know me, I would have oh, been, no. been quick about what's on the menu today, baby. 
Yeah, soft bum. What are you got? What are you gonna? <laughs> what, uh, what kind of politically correct BS are you cooking up over there today, bozo? I don't. I can't stand it. Oh Ugh. man, he's something can't else. But we do got some some good stuff to talk about today. Uh, oh, especially, yeah. let's start off with. And guys, again, drop a voice, Matt, 804-592-6160. You guys know the number probably by heart by now, but it is also pinned. We got a lot of them already, so we're going to get to those um, as soon as we can. But jumping right into the topic today, Brophy just said the cookies in the Yankees Media Cafe are, are legit. I'm telling of course you, they are. Of course they are, <laughs> man. They got to keep that shit locked down. He said the of snickerdoodles bang it. Snickerdoodle could be banging. Booney Pie makes a mean snickerdoodle, I bet. Sounds attention like a to detail, thing, doesn't it? Attention to detail on everything but the roster. That's, that's <laughs> just how they do it. That's the Yankees. And the, and the injuries. And the injuries, no doubt about it. But getting into we first let's I guess let's start off with the with the elephant in the room here and that is of course is there going to be a possibility that Jordan Montgomery finds himself back with the New York Yankees? If somebody were to ask me right now that I got to give an, an opinion on it, I would say no. I think the Yankees are kind of set. I think they're they're comfortable where they are. We'll talk about those other options. But what do you think in chat? One, if you think Monty's going to be a Yankee, or two, if you don't think he's going to be a Yankee. But, Johnny, what do you think? Um, <clears throat> I've always been in at the thought that, I mean, it's going to be really hard to get him – to be to buy in back into the system that changed him into something that he wasn't comfortable with. Right. Um, they didn't believe in this fastball. I don't know what the what the rap soto stuff, pitching stuff, all that analytics said about his pitching in within the organization that told him to pitch a certain way. Um, but when you basically get kicked to the curb for a guy in a boot in Harrison Bader, right. um, right. a reliable starting pitcher given up for an outfielder with a bad foot who was in a boot for what, two months? Two months, yeah. Um, that's a little disrespectful. I mean, and you see, you listen to some of the Monty quotes when he went to St. Louis after, after that trade. And he said, I'm a big, tall lefty. I like to throw my fastball. I like to throw my heater. Um, I think Greg Maddox's brother was the pitching coach. So he had a good relationship with him and he looked fantastic. Um, so he's had success outside of the Yankees. He just won right. a championship. He was a very important part of that team. Um, so they're going to have to, the Yankees are going to have to apologize with some greenbacks. I mean, they're going to have to pay yeah. this man. Yeah, I don't um, think and, he's taking a small deal to go to no. just, just to and go to shouldn't. the Yankees. I the guy just won a World Series. I mean, he's probably not going to have more leverage than he does now. And it's unfortunate that the whole Boris thing is, is happening right now because he really could have capitalized after the way he pitched in 2023, won the World Series, pitched well in the playoffs. So um, I'd be I'd be surprised if the Yankees did this. Um, if there's a short-term deal and in a way they can move some money around, that would be – that would be ideal for them, I guess. But um, if I think it's it's between us and what the Red Sox right now. So um, yeah, that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. Um, <clears throat> it, it could be the Yankees, Red Sox. Um, all along the offseason, my total assumption was that he's going to be a Texas Ranger. I mean, it just seemed I, obvious. I thought so too. You know, he won a World Series there. You know, <laughs> Bochi, you had Maddox, like you said. It just felt like it was right that that's where it would end up being. And right. then who the hell ever guessed all this stuff was going to happen with <sighs> Boris clients that none of them are going to sign it. JD it's Martinez sad. literally just signed yeah. after coming off a solid season again. And everybody knows mm -hmm. the type of bat he is. Right. And you got options of every team that can have a DH now. So to see him wait or take this long uh, to find a spot, is kind of odd. Um, but even going back to, you know, Blake Snell recently just signed. He's coming off of a Cy Young Award. But he even just said um, that he was, according to him, he was, uh, Boris was probably getting tired of him. Hmm. So I don't know if that means, you know, I had somebody messing me and was like, does that mean that maybe he just didn't want to be a Yankee and Boris was trying to push him to take that deal and he refused? Could be. I'm like, I, I don't know. Maybe it is. Who knows? But he was saying similar to, ba to basically that Boris is probably getting annoyed with him because what he was trying to do and wanted to do and all I believe that. It. So I it mean, could it's... be possible. It could be possible because it is odd that if he wanted to be a Yankee right. and he the Yankees offered a lot, they probably could have made something work. Yeah. I think it's same thing with Yamamoto. The guy preferred to be on the West Coast. Uh, made it happen with a West Coast team, and he's just going to be 
I don't know, geographically pleased with that rather yeah. than rather than playing for a for what we hope is a contender. I mean, the Yankees look like they're in good shape to Should at least be. compete for a wild card. So yeah. especially with Cole going down, I mean, that, if there was ever a time for for Boris and Snell to capitalize on on injury happening during spring, that was it. And it still oh, yeah. didn't happen. So oh, yeah. if it didn't happen after that, it wasn't going to happen and it didn't. So, And that's uh, why I almost feel like Monty isn't going to happen because I almost feel like with with Cole being out, how do you find a much better option than that than a guy that's already been here? Right. right. He just pitched in the playoffs. He just won a World Series. He's been within the organization. He's familiar with everyone. Um, and that might that might be a bad thing. Maybe he maybe he True. burned some maybe some bridges were burned, some some feelings were hurt. So maybe that familiarity might hurt us a little bit with some of the guys that kind of doubted him when he was yeah. in the organization. But um I mean if there's a deal to be made, I mean, make it. I mean, the guy is super solid. I was looking at some numbers. I don't want to bore you to death with this, but 2020 started 32 games. 2023 started 32 games. Yep. He's thrown over 170 innings pitched the last each of the last two seasons. Um, 3.61 ERA in 2022, 3.56 in 2023. And what we care about the most as Yankee fans is the postseason. His career postseason has a 2.63 ERA and 37.2 innings pitched. So the guy, not afraid of the spotlight. He's not afraid to pitch in the playoffs. Um, he's a workhorse. He logs innings. He's a lefty. He starts 30 plus games a season. Um, I mean, if you're going to pay a guy, this this might be a guy to pay. So um there's definitely we have a need he's right there yeah. waiting for us um it just depends on how much motivation there is on on each side on this one yeah and you can just see it. i mean if you look at the savant page you could literally just see he gets better. all the red you know what i mean he just gets better as 2022 to 2023 right and yeah i mean look i you know this is not one of those things where everybody was joking with me they go pete you've been on soto watch yamamoto watch snell watch they're like is we Monty all watch next we've all <laughs> been all right that. and yeah I'll be honest with you. No, I'm not even looking for it. This is going to be one of those yeah. deals where it happens. Like, oh shit! Yeah, hundred you know, percent. Damn, they got him. Okay, cool. Let's let's see what it is. Yeah. I'm not going to sit around going, oh, let me look at every story. No, no. Let me figure this out. Let me reach out to people. I'm not doing any of that. We are emotionally exhausted from hoping all these guys right. become Yankees. I'd say I was floored when it happened with Soto. I thought that was never going to happen. And holy yeah. shit, I was. Lord, Bro, but, I've been I've been begging for uh, that one since the days of the Nationals. Like so, for that deal to happen, it was fun that it was me and Mario on there because Mario said he was you know has always been one of his favorite players. Yeah. So the same deal for me. Like Soto's always been one of my favorite players, if not my favorite player outside of the Yankees. Right. So right. the fact that I'm sitting there going, there's really nobody else that can make this deal. It has to be the Yankees. And, I mean, and then it and then it just keeps going <laughs> and go, and you're like, all right, so. Is this going to happen or is this going to be one of those deals where it goes, we just couldn't make it work and it just falls off? A lot of posturing. And yeah, man. When it happened, it was it was kind of like one of those things like, holy shit, this actually got done. I mean, credit to the organization for stacking those pitching, that pitching depth, because that's ultimately what made that deal happen. I mean, Brito, Vasquez, uh, yep. Thorpe, um, Michael King. I mean, shout out to Higgy, but... <laughs> Yeah, that was, to, 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 Kev, that, to Kev's favorite Higgy. That was a pitching heavy deal, and that's what they were looking for, and no one else could could offer as much pitching as we did. But that kind of puts us in the position where we're now, where we need a Montgomery. We we lost yeah. Garrett Cole, which is the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen to this pitching rotation. Um, Bingo. I mean, red alert. So, I mean, I know we're going to talk about uh, some other potential options in the rotation, but, I mean, oh, if yeah. you have a Monty there on a workable deal that makes yeah. sense, that isn't going to – make Hal Steinbrenner shit his pants about the luxury tax, then, I mean, right. go go figure something out. Make a deal happen. I mean, no doubt. we need it. And, guys, we have over 230 people in here, so do me a favor. Smacky that likey, hitty the subby if you have not. And let's talk about that. Johnny brought up a, a great point. He said that the Yankees kind of collected that pitching depth to be able to make a move for Soto. But what they've also done is put themselves in a position this year where a lot of people, including myself, including a lot of people here at this network, are saying one easy thing. We're sitting there going, what makes this club different and why we believe a little more is they do have pitching depth, which they didn't have last year. Mm -hmm. This year they have that. They got the return of the man on the mound today, Luis Heal, who we're getting to a little more. We do got a super chat from Joseph uh, Delapi. My guy says, I look forward to watching from Vegas. Thank you all for your great, honest content. Keep it going. 
Salute to you, my guy. We appreciate it. Thank you, Joseph. But let's take a look right here. This is this man right here, Luis Hill, has been phenomenal. Man. Pitching to a 2-3-1 ERA, 11 inning, 11 and two-third innings in spring, 18 strikeouts. He is 2-0, and and he does take the ball today against the New York Mets at 1 o'clock. I'm going to be doing a recap of that, not game season live. I'll be doing a, a post-game show on that one because the two guys we're going to talk about now are pitching in that game. Luis Heal and Will Warren. Mm -hmm. If you had to choose one right now, what do you think their roles are going to be to start the year? Um, I can see uh, Luis Heal being maybe a six inning guy. Um, I know we have some starters with some some concerns about going deep into games like Nestor. Um, it'd be nice to kind of contrast a soft throwing lefty with a hundred mile an hour throwing right hander in the middle of the game. Yeah. Um, kind of bridge that gap to the back of the bullpen if we have a lead or if we're tied or within one or two runs. So. I think he could be he can kind of step into that maybe that Michael King role. Mm. Um he is a former starter. He could probably throw an inning or two at a time, maybe go six, seven, um, have a couple of days off, do it again. Um so I mean his stuff his stuff is is looks incredible uh yep. this spring. He's got an ERA under three. He said this he's got 18 Ks and eleven innings pitched. But that whip it was zero point zero seven seven. I mean zero point seven seven. Um, he's not walking guys. I mean, he's had trouble before with uh, being a little wild, but he's not putting guys on base. Guys aren't hitting him because he's just filthy. Absolutely um, filthy, he's, man. He could be such a weapon out of the bullpen. And I think with him coming off of that injury, it's smart to limit his innings maybe this season. Um, if you can put him in that sixth inning role, he can be a nice kind of bridge the gap to the back of the pen guy, and it's going to keep his innings down for the year or so. Um, super excited for him. Um, and, and Will Warren, I mean, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. Um <clears throat> 2022 in the minors, he started 26 games, 129 innings pitched. 2023, he started 25 games and 129 innings pitched. The guy is a proven starting pitcher. He can log over close to 130 innings. Um, he can take the ball every five days. Um, maybe we'll have a six-man rotation with Beater um, to kind of bring everyone's innings down a little bit for the season until Cole gets back. I'm not 100% sure what um, the plan is with that. but um, Right. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I wouldn't mind seeing Warren in the rotation. Um, I'd prefer to have Heal in the bullpen just to keep his arm healthy because yeah. that's an arm we're going to need this season. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you mentioned um, <clears throat> you mentioned Will Warren. Uh, Will Warren again this year, 2-1 and one in spring, 4.35 ERA, 10 and one-third innings, 13 strikeouts. So a, a couple of things just to, to run by everybody. I'll give you my opinion. It's, it's basically, I think it's right there with yours, to be honest. I think what they'll do is, since Luis Heal is going to be on an innings limit, he's not throwing 100 innings this year. He's no. probably going to be in the 80s, if that. So hopefully it'll be around the 80s. What I think the Yankees have learned with him is that this guy has absolutely worked his ass off. And he mm -hmm. looks like, if you were to look at these guys and go, who is the best pitching prospect the Yankees have? You'd probably say Luis Heal if you were just watching them. Oh, yeah. Dude, the guy stuff has is a crazy. way above average fastball. It's not straight. It's not a fastball that you just easily lock in and, and drive because it's, right. it's straight as you said, Taylor right. Swift's ass right down there. Or <laughs> you you said it or Kev said it. One of you guys said it. <laughs> we did. <laughs> it might have been Kev. But right down like straight as straight gets. All right? So it's that flat. It's not that flat. He doesn't have one of those. He yeah. has a well above average changeup. One of the better changeups in the system. He yeah. has an above average slider, and now he's also throwing a cutter. He's mixing that pitch in. So this is a guy who you just look at and you go, damn, I mean, this is legit, legit. How like we I were talking think about the Yankees utilize him is in that two to three inning role. Yeah. Early. Then they can manage in between. Give him the four days off. Give him the three yep. days off, whatever it is. This way he's still getting built up in a in a sense. He's still throwing pitches. He's still working two or three innings. We can limit that 80, 85, 90 even and have him ready for the postseason if he stays healthy all year, knock on wood. Yeah. That, to me, is probably the best-case scenario and the best role for him this year. 100%. And, I mean, like we were talking with Nestor and, and uh, Marco Gonzalez yesterday, I mean, that's a guy that guys, dead fish lefties are throwing 92. Right. Guys are guys are lining up at the bat rack. Can't wait to get up there and take some hacks. When a guy like Luis Hill comes in the game, guys are not in a hurry to go stand in there and face a hundred right. with that kind of stuff. I mean, that if you're down in the game and you're trying to make a comeback and you got Hill coming in blowing a hundred by you, that's not a fun time. So 
Um, he can be so valuable yeah. in the pen. And, and a lot of guys, when they do come in in that short relief role, they are bringing more max effort. So, I mean, he could come in. Maybe he'll maybe he'll touch one on one. Who knows? But oh, no um, doubt, no doubt. I mean, Especially when you're more the bullpen, just let yeah. loose. Come on, man. That's that is not a fun time. And I know he's been in the system for a while, and we kind of yep. don't think about it. But he's only 25 years old. Yeah, he's young. So he's I mean, young, he's still. We also forget how good he was when he came up. What do you have? 21 yeah. scoreless innings. And yeah, yeah people like I, he faced the Orioles a couple of times. I don't give a poot who he faced. Yeah. He did it at the major league level. Major league hitters. So, it's major league hitters. No, no yep. matter. I know the Orioles lineup then wasn't what it is now, right. but you can't take that away from the guy to show that he's had success at the major league level. So that's definitely something that I want to continue to see. But sticking on Will Warren too for a second, and one thing we need to talk about is that Luis Heel is on the forty man. Will Warren is not on the forty man. We'll talk about that. But Connor O'Neill says, "Who spends money worse, Cashman or Otani's guy?" <laughs> Ooh, that's a tough one, my guy. I don't know. That's, that's a that's tough Josh one Donaldson me. and Aaron Hicks. They're still getting paid by him. Yeah, that's oh yeah, they're still getting paid. So that is <laughs> that is pretty damn tough. That is pretty tough, guys. If you have not hit that like button, go ahead and hit that like button. We'll start getting into voicemails right after we have uh, we finish off on the starting pitching conversation, but. Will Warren is a guy that I want to speak of because a lot of people you talk to, whether it's pitching coaches at certain levels in the Yankees organization, which Dane and Los have done a great job of doing, advanced scouts for some other teams that Dane and Los have done a great job of doing, and they tell us all the time that a lot of people really feel that this is the best Yankees pitching prospect right now that is at the upper levels that can help the club and he's opened a lot of eyes, and you mentioned it earlier. You don't got to worry about innings with Will Warren. You could literally sit back and go, he'll give a, he could give us 150, 160 this year. Right. He's done 120 plus back to back years. He has one of, I think it's rated maybe the best slider in the system. Throws mid 90s, really good very good slider. A, a guy that also seems like he has it up here. Mm hmm. That if he gets, he doesn't really get rattled. He kind of keeps it tunnel vision and goes about his business. I like Will Warren. I would not be upset if Will Warren is named the number five starter, which I'll say right now, I believe he will be. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely their safest bet. Um, I know Beater is a guy a lot of people bring up. Um, he did start 23 games in 20. And, yeah, he started 23 games in 2022, but only threw 77 innings. Yeah. So he, he didn't. Crossed that hundred yard, hundred inning threshold until twenty twenty three. A guy like Warren has done it back to back years, uh, yep. close to one hundred and thirty innings pitched. Um, one thing, only thing that concerns me a little bit with Warren is he could be a little wild at times. Right. Um, but overall, I mean, the stuff plays. He got smacked around. I think in his last start was against the Red Sox. Yeah, in the first inning, um, and then he then he really settled he, down. Yeah, he came back out. They put him back out there. He he took it in the chin in the first inning. He came back out. He battled and he he kind of made the best of it. So. Um, I mean, sometimes like some of the guys on the telecast, like Jack Curry and them said, I mean, sometimes you can tell more about a picture uh, about how they respond after they get smacked around in the first inning and come yeah. back out and keep performing more than you can on a good start when everything's going right. So um, he's shown some tenacity. He's shown that he can go out there and attack major league hitters within the strike zone. Um, yeah, but if he could just, I mean, he's still a young guy. He's still usually, I mean, a little wild. You need to refine that little bit that comes right. as you get more experience and you get more work at the major league level. But um, yeah, I mean, a guy that can log 130 innings is, is exactly what this rotation needs right now. And yeah. even though he's a rookie, if he can, if he can have an ERA in the low fours, 4.3 ish, yeah. four Hell four, yeah. we'll take that every day of the week over 130 innings. So, and um, it's it's not last year's offense. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the other thing people got to remember. Is yes, you get a little nervous when you're saying a guy might have a 4.18 ERA, 4.25 ERA. Then you're like, oh shit, man! Like we're never gonna win with this guy in the mound. But no. With this type of offense that we are expecting from the New York Yankees, going against other number five starters, mm -hmm. I think you'd feel pretty comfortable with Will Warren giving you innings. And even right. if he does, like you said, give a give a, a low four, mid four ERA, you should get some W's out of those games. He right. should be able to keep you in them at least. Which and is totally maybe surprise some people. Yeah, which is totally fine for a back of the rotation arm. Yep. I mean, you don't need a, a 2.5 ERA guy as your fifth starter. You need someone who's going to keep you in a ball game. Go out there, attack hitters, give me five or six innings, keep the game within three or four runs, give the offense a chance. That's all you need out of the fifth starter. So yep. 
Um, I, I think he's poised to to do that. Um, we'll see Heal and, and Warren get some more work today and kind of see where they fall as we get closer. What are we about seven seven days, six days? From six days. Opening day? Six days from opening day. Six days. Yes, sir. So can't um, wait, baby. Whew, it's coming up quick. So these guys are getting their last little tune ups and uh today. I mean, I look forward to Heal continuing to look fantastic. I look forward to yep. seeing Warren come in. Um I don't I don't know how many times he's come in relief. He's gonna come in relief today, so we'll see how he handles that. Yeah. Um, starting pitchers are creatures of habit and they love to have their pregame routines and do their long toss and stuff like that. So yep. be interesting to see him come in, not having that, or maybe he'll do it before the game. Who knows? But, um, yeah, interested to see how, how Warren looks out of the bullpen. So very interesting to watch yeah, today. And one more thing too, regarding <clears throat> Clayton beater is one thing we have heard from, uh, many people that we speak to at this, at this network, Dane Lowe's our prospect guys, they always continue to tell us that the majority of people out there feel like he is a relief pitcher. They do not believe in him as a starter because he has not developed the changeup enough. And they right. feel he's a two-pitch guy and that is it. And right. let's be honest, at this level, you can get through the, the, the orders one time. Right. But when it goes to that second time, that third time, kind of the concern we have with Nesta Cortez is that do you really have the stuff that it, it takes Right. To put guys away multiple times in a game. Right. A lot of people do not see that in Clayton Beater. Now, to be fair, also, a lot of people have also said this is the best he's ever looked. Right. So I think the Yankees probably, if I were the Yankees, Clayton Beater's a guy, I send a triple A and make him start. Mm -hmm. And just tell him, look, you're right there. You're on the 40 man. First time we need somebody, you're going to get a shot. And he's going to go get down work. there and do the same thing and get your work in. Right. Prove that everybody you can do this and we'll get you right back up. That's what I right. would, that's what I would do. And then, and I, he should be totally fine with that. I mean, I know he's trying to make a club here, but he's competing with, he's competing with Warren who's been in the system as says beater, yeah. but Warren is, is uh, a guy who's been around a little bit longer within the system. He's a guy they really like. He's got logs innings. Um, so he kind of takes priority in my opinion. Um, no they, doubt. they don't, they're not afraid of him logging 130 innings. Like he has each of the last two seasons. He's stretched out for that. Um, so it just makes the most sense, but I mean, beater's going to get work, even if he doesn't make the club on opening day. I mean, it's only a matter of time before he comes up and makes a spot tar start or two. Um, unfortunately there's always going to be guys that get hurt. So there's going to be times where we're going to need him to spot start. So, right. um, it, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a, de uh, like a demotion or a bad thing for beater. I mean, he's going to get a ton of work this year. So, Correct. um, look, it's a good problem to have though. Those are two yep. good young arms, um, two guys with good promise, two guys with good stuff. So it's a, it's a good problem to have. We do have that depth. So looking forward to seeing them both. Yep, and then we got a super chat here from Joseph Delapi again. He goes, do you think Cole's contract is insured and Yankees are reducing overhead to offset the price of a guy like Monty? Good question. I don't know. I mean, I think if he's out for the year, knock on wood, God forbid, I do believe that is insured typically when a guy doesn't pitch the whole year due to an injury. That would be nice. I mean, if, yeah, if that... I'm not, I, I'm obviously not an expert on this, so please don't quote right. me that I, I, I'll be on. I'm kind of pulling that out of my ass to be honest with you, but yeah. I think that's how it works. I've heard of it before kind of, but I'm, yeah, I'm not a contractologist, so I'm right, not hundred percent right. sure what, how the insurance premiums okay, work. No with, Brian Cashman's here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, not okay. a little Brian Cashman action. Okay. <laughs> it, I mean, it, but if his money was off the books and they can give that, or a portion of that to Monty, at least for this year. I mean, shit, why not? Cool. <laughs> Do it if it's, could, if it's there, but I think, I think Cole's one. coming up. Cole's going to pitch this year regardless. So I don't think that's a thing. I agree. All right, guys, let's go ahead. We have um, a couple of voicemails here that we want to get to. Let's go ahead and get to the first one. Hey, this is Joey Joey from the Bronxy Bronxy. <laughs> Smacky the likey. Hitty the subby. Let's go. Now, I've been itching for a long time okay. to call out the New York Yankees and every other team in the MLB as the hypocritical assholes that they are uh -oh. Uh -oh. for not snatching up Trevor Bauer. But I held my tongue. You know why? Hmm. Because it would have more impact when I called them out if I did so right after a big-ass scandal broke out in the league, and they tried to cover it up. Mm. And so I got my wish. The mother of all scandals. 
It <laughs> turns out that Shohei Otani, their little wonder boy, the squeaky clean <laughs> poster boy of baseball, is a degenerate criminal gambler. Oh, Put him in the clink. How about that? Now, Put him away for life. We didn't pick random. up Trevor Bauer. I'm <laughs> not because of legal reasons, because he hasn't been convicted of any crime. And we also didn't pick him up because of uh, financial reasons, because he announced that he would play for the league minimum. So why didn't we pick him up? Because of ethical reasons. We're so ethical. Oh, we can't. We can't do that. Okay, so now this Otani guy is exposed uh, with his little partner as these criminal gamblers. Um, this man had a lot to get out of his chest this morning. Hell Are yeah. they suspending Otani? No. no. Are they even launching an investigation into this? No. Are they even nope. allowing Otani to answer some fucking questions? No. Nope. No. They're trying to sweep it under the rug. Uh, so the next this man time is dialed somebody in. Somebody tries to virtue signal and claim that, oh, Trevor Bauer is just too toxic. We couldn't have him contaminate our little organization. Time to go fuck. Contaminate. <laughs> contaminate, okay. Thank you. Appreciate you, Joey. Um, I will say this really quickly. And there's a lot to a, unpack there. <laughs> yeah, there there is a lot to 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 unpack here. Obviously, we know the Otani stuff. I just want to say one more thing real quickly about um Bauer. There's a lot more than people know than people think they know to it. I'm not, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, we found out some more information that is just between our team. Um, but there, there's a lot more when it comes to Trevor Bauer and people actually know. I'm just going to leave it at that. Not going to go any further, but there is a whole lot more to the Trevor Bauer story that people are not hearing about. He's a weird and dude. He's a very, very strange guy. And I'll say this right now. I don't think Trevor Bauer is going to be pitching at the, in the major leagues um, anytime from even new information that I've, I've recently come across that yeah I, I i don't i don't think anybody is gonna sit there and go let's let's get this guy in this clubhouse it's it's not great and if you if you if i see somebody say you can't leave it at that you'll hear about it i'm sure it'll come out it'll it'll there'll be more that will come out i'm sure and that's it but when this. it comes to otani i, I don't want to i don't want to stay on this for a long time when it comes to otani but yeah it's it's wrong it's wrong, right? We we know the stuff with Otani is wrong. We we know it's odd. I, this is a Yankee show. I don't want to stick on this, yeah. but I get it. I know I do. I get it. I understand. Everyone's I'm not happy with uh, with the Otani situation. It's not right. It's not fair. They, right. There should right. very very well be a full investigation. Full. And I agree. If this was any other player, they'd be on leave until they had a full investigation. Right now. Yeah, There's that's typically the way it goes. I mean, $4 million leaving the dude's account. You got his name on, on wire transfers from his Multiple bank account. Multiple transactions, so yep. yep. The fact that they're not even going to look into this is a little crazy to me. Uh, maybe they are, and they're not giving it to the media. Who? I mean, yep. it just there's just a lot that still needs to be unpacked with this whole situation. There's a lot of weird stuff and weird information. Um, But, yeah, I mean, frustrating for all the fans, but honestly, there's really not much we can do about it, so... No, I mean, not at all. Well, we'll see what actually happens. Some people say with the FBI involved, they can't really, you know, they're going to say the truth of the matter. At this point, I don't know. There's a lot of friggin' people making money off Otani. He is an absolute cash cow for Major League yeah. Baseball. Look at look at just alone the, the amount of endorsements the guy gets way more than anybody else than the number two. He gets like over $60 million in endorsements alone yearly. Oh, yeah. So the guy's an absolute cash cow for baseball. I'm not I'm not I'm not sitting here saying that's a reason to leave him alone. No, I think he should be fully punished or whatever they come to find out knowing what he did. It doesn't make it different to anybody else. If it was Aaron Judge or a Yankee, I'd say the same shit. Yeah. If, this... if you did it, you did it. It's that simple. Doesn't matter what team you played on. It's I see Dodgers fans doing everything they can to to kind of be like, oh, it's not a big deal. One guy said this dumbest friggin' thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> right? He said he tweeted this and he <laughs> goes. Otani said 
it was Deft and Ippy or whatever his name agrees to it. Nuff said that's the story done. So there's no questions that need so to be no asked. Digging, so no, no, no digging, no questions no to be asked. Because nah. nobody lies for one another. Yeah, nobody just leave it alone, that. right? Yeah, sure. Please, okay. take a walk. The same, the same Dodger fans that are still talking about the Astros cheating scandal all of a sudden are not into cheating scandals. So, exactly, I mean, I, exactly. I wouldn't say betting is even cheating. I don't think the guy was betting on games he was playing in. Right, right. But at the same time, you know, that's a there's a hard line drawn in the sand when you're doing sports betting and you're a yeah. professional athlete so yep. he he, he knows much. that he's not dumb so yep. i mean he's kind of doing some you there's no way there's no way he didn't know there's, no, his name's didn't. all over this stuff no one's moving four million dollars out of your bank account without you knowing so Facts. um it's crazy who knows who knows yeah. what's gonna happen? We'll, we'll we'll see what actually happens i don't think the story is gonna go away that quick i think fans it and shouldn't with social media it's gonna be kept alive for a little while and somebody may eventually really dig into this but we'll see what happens. Let's keep the voicemails going, and then we're going to get into the Yankees' bullpen. Hey, yo, Joey oh. Mega Donuts. Hey, oh, yo. Boy. Hey. There's my guy. What's going on, everybody? Pete, Mr. Johnny. Listen, what Johnny, it's all love, baby. I love you and everything, but I think you might need to go get a sleep apnea test, bro. I came into Kevin's space at like 4.30 this morning, bro, and I heard you, and you were you was cutting wood, homie. But oh I'm, man, I'm I think I knocked here. out on that on that shit, dude. I woke up, I woke I, up in the middle I, of the night, like, you know, oh big shit, G, little big G action. Uh, okay, little big G. I don't know if 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 Giancarlo Stanton and Rizzo are hitting this this lineup is on a totally different level than what we're thinking it's on, <laughs> and I could give a poot about pitching because I think pitching we're going to be okay, but stay healthy in Mexico, start the season, beat up on the Astros a little bit, okay. And uh, let's go get. Let's go win another championship. Let's go. Hey man, look. Let's win. Let's win. Let's let let's win, man. But but am I wrong to say this? And I think you've been you've been on the uh, you know Stan has a lot to prove type train, right? Am I wrong to? I am impressed with what he did. I'm impressed with his power. Oh yeah. Am I wrong to say I'm gonna be more impressed to see him do that with right handers that throw 96? Need to see that. Still is that coming. wrong for me to say? That no. he, can he hit the slider? Can he lay off the slider? Can he not look like he's swinging a fucking tree trunk when he sees a slider? I mean, it's very fair. Is that wrong for me to say? That's what I want to see from G. But I hope, I hope he is truly back because it makes this team way better. Yeah, we we know he can hit lefties. We've that's been established. He's Especially he's a guy the guys that, that are throwing eighty two and eighty eight. Yeah, that's that's we that's what he needs. If he has any role on the team at all, is to hit guys like that. But I know people uh, probably get mad and they're like, "Pete, why do you gotta put?" I'm not trying to. I'm really not trying to put him down. I'm not. No, no. But no, I'm no, just no. saying. I mean, the the both two of the. I think the. I think every homer was like on 82, 87, yeah. 88. I'm like, that's 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 BP type shit. Yeah, but yeah. He still did it in a game. I get it. Hey, if he can. I've been, I'm on the record being pretty harsh about this dude, but if yeah. he can hit 30 homers, 20, give me 28 homers, give me an OPS of like 750, 760, 770. Yeah. Um, I mean, please just be something, be be some sort of threat at the plate because he's going to hit fifth, sixth, maybe fourth oh, yeah. sometimes. Um, he's going to be an impact position in the lineup. We know that. Got to have him hit. Got to yeah. have the guy hit. So. Yeah. No doubt about it. Let's get to one more voicemail, and then we're going to get into the Yankees bullpen. He peep my choking in the house. Hey, I do. Play on the ground. Spring training is dwindling down, but the New York underground and my choking are fired up to get the season started. I don't know if the Yankees bring back Montgomery, but I do know Scott Boris is a parasite on Major League Baseball and an out-and-out jabroni that would throw a drowning man an anchor, yeah. Speaking of bones, Yamamoto's been throwing spring rolls out there and has got an elbow drop like a jobber in a high school gymnasium. Or as I like to call it, AEW. 
That's probably because he's upset his girlfriend don't and he got pinched for wire and his money girlfriend to don't guys with no <laughs> necks or his interpreter short round. Would have sleep with the sushi digging. And he time he'd been parading his wife around like a trophy, yeah. Well, I got so news good. for you, old Tiny. Liberace had a wife, and Freddie Mercury used to date girls, too, you know. <laughs> they disrespected New York and the Yankees and our fans. So the Rose jumps that piss stained Boris and the Red Sox just because they're scumbags. Wow. You get the fuck you of the day, dig it. At the Yamamoto in Otani, Kuta Bari. Oh, yeah. Watch out. Oh, I don't so know good. how anybody tops that. That is, is That was an all-time elite voicemail. He touched on every, he said, oh, he said the guy's throwing spring rolls. He's so Who good, says man. that? He's throwing spring rolls out there in spring train. This is this guy's Macho King's the best. He is Freddie so Mercury good. dated a woman too at one point. <laughs> oh man, he is. He is too good. Oh man. man, absolutely, absolutely classic as classic gets. That is unbelievable. You ain't nobody's topping that. No, no. With that being said, since nobody's topping that, it is certainly time to move on to <laughs> the New York Yankees. Oh my goodness. The New York Yankees bullpen. And before we do that, really briefly, we do got a super chat I want to get to so I don't miss it. L.I. Yanking says, by the way, Tanaka's translator was revealed to be making $200 million per year. And if Ippy is making $300,000, it would take him 20 plus years to make $4.5 million. And a betting source is going to wait 20 years for $4.5 million. Yeah, that's a lie. Otani's name was attached to it. Nobody's letting a guy get in the hole that much. No, no, no. they're a damn translator. How much they Otani's name was somewhere backing. Anyway, everybody knows this. Let's move on. Right. Yankees bullpen. I want to right away jump into one thing. Every time you watch the Yes Network, they bring up this image of what the Yankees bullpen is going to be. For some odd reason, Ron Marinaccio's on there. I don't know what Ron Marinaccio has done to deserve a spot. But I'll sit here and say it right now. I would be utterly shocked if Ron Marinaccio makes the team. He's been terrible last year, pitching to an eight plus ERA in spring. There's much better options than Ron Marinaccio for the Yankees bullpen. I don't I don't understand it either. Um if we're gonna do a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. Oh shit, there it is. I think he has Aaron Boone's nudes. He has to. Oh, there's he no other, there's no other there's explanation no for this man being part of that or that roster, being part of that bullpen. Come on. Hold on. Boone got something to tell you. The guy, you know, oh, I no. just felt like it was kind of bullying, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, is, Boone. He baked those cakes, baby. Uh, he's soft as baby shit. Come on. But, I mean, why – you have you, – we have all these dudes with great arms. You got yeah. Dennis – you got Santana yesterday oh. throwing 98, blowing yeah. shit by people, striking out yep. the three best – Two or two of the three best hitters on the on the Braves, and you're gonna put a guy like Ron Marinaccio in the bullpen over Bro, him, Come and you on. have my guy right here, Nick Birdie. Oh, Nick Birdie has is look at look at it look at this right now. Six innings pitched, twelve strikeouts, got sitting at a three ERA. This guy needs to make this club. Look, I'm there with you on a lot of these guys. Nick Birdie, yeah. hell, Clayton Beater. Hell, we said Luis Heal already. We've said Denny Santana. We talked about all these guys already. There's a guy, too, that it just shocks me that. And if we got Brophy in here or Dane or, or, or Los or any any of our prospect guys, it just shocks me that Yoendri's Gomez just gets no love. Here's a yeah. guy that was throwing 97 out the bullpen last year, pitched a couple of innings, and looked phenomenal. I'm kind of shocked. He's been on the 40-man for years, mm -hmm. and he just doesn't get a shot. Unless they feel like let him start again in the minor leagues and go and see what we have there. But I don't know. But I I'm sorry. It looks like Tommy Canely. And if I pull up the depth chart here, we could just take a look at what they have. John Lewisig, I know he's your guy. You love him. He hasn't pitched great. But I do believe he obviously deserves a chance to make the team just yeah. because of what he's done. And he's still throwing 98. Yeah. So if he he's puts filthy. it together, he's there. We know Clay Holmes is there. Tommy Canely is not going to start on time. I'm not a big Ian fan Ian Hamilton of this. looks excellent. 
He's so good. He's awesome. Lee, Ian Hamilton is awesome. Could really be a setup man this year. Victor Gonzalez and Caleb Ferguson are going to be the lefties out the pen. That we know. Now it goes to who are the other names. Right. I think Nick Birdie's a lock. Has I don't to know be. how Nick Birdie doesn't make this club. And you hear the way they've been talking about him all spring. I mean, Boone's been raving about him. Um, Curry's been raving about him. All these, all the, all the, all the right people within the organization have been talking about Nick Birdie stuff. Like, yeah. holy he shit, has a, this dude's he has an filthy. awesome family too, by the way. Does just he? You met him? Just want to shout that out. Uh, yes, one of them. Yes, very, very in Tampa. Very, very awesome family. Very supportive. That's cool. And you know, we his story. I, I I've been talking about this for a while now. He's a guy that when he came up with the Pirates, they were expecting he was going to be their Bednar. He was going to be their closer for years and years to come because he had that type of stuff. Unfortunately for Nick Birdie, he just has not been able to stay healthy. Right. And they worked a bit on his arm angle and his arm slot to maybe alleviate some of the stress on the elbow and the shoulder. And guess what? Voila. He's still throwing 100 miles an hour, 98, yeah. 97, 96, 99. With an unbelievable slider. He has everything. He's a big guy. He got everything that he needs to be a very, very, very good relief pitcher. To the point that we could be looking at this guy, this type of talent that potentially has pitching late in games this year. Yeah. Oh man. If he can if he can stay healthy, like you said, that's the big question that's the, for that's him. That's the key. Um, always been the key for him is his health. I like you said, lasagna's my guy, but if he's if he struggles or if he gets hurt again, like he has been consistently for the last few seasons, if Nick Birdie is in there healthy, blowing a hundred, looking lights out, it's hard to not put him within that seven, eight kind of inning range where he can be a dominant setup guy, keep a lead, uh, keep a game close. Yeah. Um, Cause like we said earlier about Louis heel, no one is rushing to the bat rack to go stand in there and face a hundred from that arm angle. So Damn right. um, that's, that's a tough that's a tough thing to do um slider is ridiculous his arm angle is <clears throat> is real tough on right handers so he can kind of neutralize some of those big power right-handed bats late yep. in the game um it's a lot to be excited about with him um i'm i love the stuff i love everything about him big tall strong dude six three um my my hopes aren't super high on him just because of the injury stuff i don't want to be the like only concern yeah like i don't want to be heartbroken and think we're and gonna my have thing this too dude. just if he's healthy now i know i know there's going to be the situation right where you kind of got a baby guys and you know the yankees do this more they got the bullpen budget bullshit and all that yeah i'm just at the point with a guy nick birdie man get get what you get what you can get out of him for real. while he's because healthy Get While he's there. healthy, because if yeah. he if he is gonna remain healthy, knock on wood, let's hope that's the case. And I wish him the best. I really do. Right. If as long as he's that, you probably could have called lightning in a bottle with this guy and be pretty damn shocked about the numbers he could put up. Because he is yeah. that type. And another guy like that is you mentioned him right here, Denny Santana. Man. I mean, 2.79 ERA, nine and two third innings, 13 strikeouts. The big thing again with him is command. Yeah. Is he going to walk a lot of guys? Is is he going to be able to kind of put it together and keep it together and be able to um, really navigate through big parts of an order? Do the Yankees feel he could do that? He obviously got the stuff for it. Right. These guys are not on the 40 man. A guy that is right. on the 40 man is Cody Poteet. And he's also had a very, very good spring. Uh, 2.35 ERA, 72 yeah. third inning, 7 Ks. Probably very has underrated. a very good chance. Yeah, he has a very good chance, I would say, to make the club, to be honest. And he can be a, he can be a spot starter. He's started in the yep. past. Um, he's got a good changeup to kind of neutralize left-handed bats in Yankee Stadium, which is big. Um, you can he, he's, well, he's been up to, what, 96 this spring? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, the yep. stuff is there. Good changeup, good mix. We've got a good breaking ball. Heater's good. He can log in. He can be two, three, and guy. He can spot start. I mean, very versatile, valuable arm. Um, for the staff so i think he's a guy man it's tough if it's between i think poteet is is he on the 40 he's on the 40 man he's yeah, on so the 40 he obviously has the advantage so he i think he will ah oh, it's tough i would i don't want to for sure going to get a spot but he's definitely going to be held in high regard because of his versatility because yeah. of some of those things he's a he's kind of a veteran he hasn't he was hurt i think he did tell me john recently right yeah he was hurt yeah, I think he, yeah he was hurt yeah 
So, uh, but... yeah, a lot, a lot to look forward to. We got a lot of good options in the bullpen. Um, question's just going to be, are they going to be overtaxed? Or how right. deep are our starters going to go? Um, are we going to have a healthy Loiza gut? A healthy Loiza gut That's is the a, key. a big, That's the big, key. big part of this bullpen. I mean, I, he's, I mean, I named my whole thing after him. I, obviously, I like the guy a lot. <laughs> right, but, right. Um, I, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't frustrated with the arm stuff. And and if I'm going to sit here and sit here and, and tell you that, I mean, I, I think it's a very high chance he's going to get hurt again. The, the type of injuries he has with his forearm and his elbow and his shoulder, those things are recurring and they have been recurring. And you, what do you think they're just going to stop overnight? Obviously yeah, his body doesn't respond well to him throwing 98 mile an hour bowling balls for a living. So yep. it's how many, how many months are we going to get from him? Are they going to baby him? I think their plan with him to be the Michael King guy, the two inning guy, is a horrible plan. It's it's terrible. Everybody, oh. I immediately upon that was being uh, part of the conversation. It, it absolutely shook me. I'm like, are you nuts? Like, stupid. Why? It's dumb. It's stupid. It, it, it's 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 a losing plan in my opinion. It's one right. of those plans where it goes out there like, yeah, bro, this ain't gonna work. Like we know this going in, but we got to turn something in. You know what I mean? Right. It's like the teacher. Yeah, just turn fucking. You're not. You're gonna fail. Yeah. yeah but just I mean, turn when it you, in, you gotta... when you have a heel or you have a a poteet who can go multiple innings and kind of be a bridge guy. Weaver. You Weaver. You don't need Loisaga to tax himself to throw. Here's here's the thing with pitchers. For a lot of people who have pitched in the past, one thing that was hard for me when I was a starting pitcher was pitching, getting hot, doing your thing. You go sit down, and then the offense hits for a while. And then you get cold. Right. You get stiff. You have to go back out. You have to ramp it up again, throw your warm-up pitches, try to stay loose, ramp it. That right there is what hurt, gets guys hurt more than just coming in and blowing cheese. Like yeah. so, for a guy like Loisaga who has forearm issues, who has elbow issues, if you're gonna go make him sit down and get cold and get stiff and have to get back up, heat it all up again, throw that 96, throw that 98. It's you're putting his elbow and his forearm and his shoulder in a jeopardized position because he's yeah. he's fragile. You got to treat and him. And he had uh, bone chips removed too just last year. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you got it. You, he's fragile. You have to understand that he's fragile. You can't overwork him. You got to really be smart and pick your spots with him. Uh, the priority has to be him being healthy in the stretch run, August, September, hopefully October for a playoff run. You need him in those months. Hopefully yeah. when Garrett Cole is going to be there too. So, um, oh, I yeah. mean, use him sparingly. I mean, when you can, don't overuse don't overwork the guy just make sure he's ready when we need him on the stretch run facts no doubt about it so we got about uh we got a little bit of time here to, to do a couple of voicemails guys we'll get to some of those let's keep it going then we'll get ready to uh to wrap up but we're not going anywhere yet stay there hit the likey if you have not yet let's yeah. get to the next voicemail what up, Simon, oh buddy? shit Yo, Pete, how you doing, man? How you doing? How you doing? Everything good, man? I hope so. Um, I'm over here talking to you like as if I can actually hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, no, what's up, man? Um, uh, Mon, <laughs> for the Yankees. <laughs> Shit, man. It's like I, I want it. I want it to happen because we need. A, so the thing is, we need another pitcher, man. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, that's bothering me is like, Monty doesn't like Cashman or the front office. But then again, and on the other Can't hand, blame it's like money talks. Facts. So it's like, if you want to win, you got to sign with the Yankees, man, because this is like a, as of now, I feel like this is an ALCS type of team. Mm. But when uh, Garrett Cole comes back, you know, if, if, if Nestor balls out, if Real Dome balls out, if Strowman balls out, and Schmidt balls out. Yeah, this is a World Series team, man, because it feels like so the thing that we're slacking with this year is going to be the pitching. That's what I feel like because right. our offense is there. So let's see how it goes, man. Let's see. Anyways, man, before I go, you know I got to hit you with a little damn joke. Come on now. Uh-oh, here we go. Here it is. I know now why castles are so expensive because they charge a lot. <laughs> Gotta go, man. <sighs> of course. That's DJ Steels for you, man. There That's you go. DJ Steels. That's the DJ. Uh, I got a book. He got a book. He wants to use the book. I don't blame <laughs> him. But here we go, guys. We have one of the goats of NYYU. 
right now that is leaving a voicemail. Here Uh-oh. we go. The one, the only, Simon from New Haven, Connecticut. Hey, Pete, your boy Simon calling from Bella Vista, New Haven, Connecticut. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> My mom sends her love to you, too, Pete. She watches you every day that. at the nursing home. Pete, I don't Let's know if we're going to get Jordan Montgomery. I mean, I don't know if he wants to come back here after the way he was treated. I mean, I mean, first of all, they trade him because they want this uh, Freddie, this um, Montent and his guy, whatever you call him. And, and now they want now they want Jordan Montgomery uh, back. I mean, I don't blame him for feeling the way he does. I mean, I, I wouldn't come back, but, you know. I, I don't believe it until I see it. If Jordan Montgomery comes back, you know, then then I'll believe it. But until then, you know, I don't think he should, you know, with the way that the Yankees treated him. I mean, first they trade him away, now they want him back. What is he, a piece of meat? Uh, I mean, Brian Cashman's an idiot. <laughs> anyway, Pete, uh, you rock on. Have a good day. NYY Underground Forever. And remember, Aaron Judge is a gift from God. And stay in the lineup, gift from God. We need you. Bye, Pete. Bye. That is Simon, okay. folks. That is Simon. But he's not wrong. You know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how Monty really, you know, feels about the Yankees. Who the hell knows what what the what the real concern there is? But we'll see. We do hey, got. If, if Stroman can forgive him, maybe Monty can. Who knows? I'm, I'm right. I'm. That's that's a very very valid point. We got a super <laughs> chat to get to, and then one more voicemail. Then we're gonna wrap up. Zilla says, "Am I wrong to think Luis Heel can would be an absolutely electric as a setup man, future closer? I love to see him." start over Warren Beater until Cole returns. I think that's the thing, though, man, is, yeah, I, I think the Yankees know if you just let this kid loose for an inning, he could probably dominate and pitch oh, very, yeah. very well. But the point there is that you don't want to lose that idea as a starter. This year, they got to limit him. He's not going to mm-hmm. come out there and do 100-plus innings. So, yes, if there ever was a year to make a guy a two-inning guy, two- to three-inning guy, he's your best option by far. It's not even close. 100%. I mean... You look like we said. Look at the stuff, man. 100 miles an hour is probably his stuff's going to play up out of the pen because he's not going to have to mortgage his energy over four or five innings Facts. as a starter. Um, it's it's going to be something something real fun to see for us and something hitters are not going to want to see when he's coming and blowing a hundo. So yeah, um, we'll and see. I'm excited in. to see him pitch today. Well, yeah, one o'clock, guys. Tune in because he is going to go ahead and he'll be on the mound to start. I got you guys covered on the post game today. Not game season live. I got some stuff to do after this. But um, I will be doing a post game for you guys. Let's get to the last voicemail, then we're going to wrap up. Hi, Pete. And hi, Johnny. I've been enjoying watching you. Uh, this Good morning. This is Gene Trulato. And I'm just hi, Gene. Uh, on the subject of Montgomery. I'm kind of on two sides. Uh, one of them is remembering, you know, this is hurt feelings and how he couldn't get anything done because of the lineup, backing him up, et cetera. Yeah, and I'm him, wondering, uh, with the Cashman mistreatment and his hurt feelings, how he would feel about how he'd be treated upon his return. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind, after watching the World Series, that he could really be an excellent pitcher and of great benefit to us. But I'm more concerned, uh, I'm kind of concerned for him of how he would be received and treated upon returning to the Yankees. And I have uh, very positive feelings about Warren. Anyway, I wish you both a wonderful day, and I'm in, sitting here enjoying the chat and your discussion. Bye now. Absolutely love it. Thank you so yeah. much for the call. Love it. Thank you, Gene. Always appreciate it. Gene is of go. We we got a few goats of our of our voicemails, and Gene is definitely uh, Gene is definitely one of them. So we Thanks. appreciate that and. Yeah, and I, no. I think some she said. I mean, how Monty would be received by the fans. I think he'd be yeah. welcomed with open arms. I mean, I agree. I agree. I, I think. I, and look, I, I've. I everybody knows this. Um, since the start of the off season, even before that, I was preaching for the Yankees to get two solid starting pitchers. They only got uh, Marcus Stroman. Yes, we're hopeful for bounce backs of 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 certain players, but. You know, you you would be hard pressed not to seriously admit that the Yankees rotation does have red flags. That there are guys that are going to have to convince many people of who they really are, including one of my favorite players on the team, Carlos Rodon. Um, and you know, there's no reason to really get into that now. But just the point here is, you could never have enough starting pitching. I, I think yep. that old age adage will always <clears throat> add up. And you can definitely never have enough pitching. Good thing is for the Yankees, they do have a lot of depth this year in the pitching side of things. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes.
We're in a good shape. We're in, I think we're in good shape. I agree. I, I agree. And guys, a uh, couple of quick plugs here tonight, nine o'clock Bronx or nothing is live. So make sure you tune in for that again after the game. So whenever this game at one o'clock ends, I'll have the post game show for you guys. Uh, the main reason being, I want to talk about Luis Hill and Will Warren, and we're going to see both of them pitch in today's game. So I want to talk about that. Um, March 27th, next Wednesday, we got the Knights at the round table, guys. Our biggest show of the preseason. It is the show that sets everything up for the rest of the year. We'll be giving you guys our predictions, ALE standings, where the Yankees finish, where they go, MVP, Cy Youngs, all that fun stuff. Again, it'll be the designated spitters, me and Francis, Bronx and nothing, Mario and Kev, Johnny and NYYST's Christian. We're all going to be on that panel. It's going to be an amazing show. Um, so, yeah. It'll be awesome. It's going to be awesome, man. Can't uh, wait. Johnny, I, how, was the, how was the first All Rise, by the way? You enjoyed it? First All Rise was great, man. I mean, I'm not the biggest morning person, to be honest, but okay. it, it worked out very well today. I mean, I, I feel good. Uh well rested as uh I forget was it Joey Bag of Donuts uh, yeah. heard, he heard me snoozing on the <laughs> the the chat or, or whatever the hell you call that thing on Twitter last night but uh, yeah it, fun show uh, great turnout from everyone um, keep hitting that like button and uh, hit the subbies too I mean yep. um, great interaction great voicemails uh, very fun show just like all the others so happy to be here. Yeah, and one more quick thing I want to throw out there. You guys have heard me talk about a pitcher a lot. His name is Danny Masaki. Um, he pitched in Brazil, and he threw, like, a, I think, a, compl a shutout with, like, 14 Ks and just has phenomenal stuff, was in the minor leagues for a while um, with Seattle, had a lot of injuries, and is trying to get back, but the kid has amazing stuff. i actually been talking to him on Instagram. He pitches for the Diablos now. He just got signed, and he said he may be pitching against the Yankees. Wow. So just so everybody's aware of that, uh, look out for Danny Masaki if both of those games are going to be covered. I think they will be. He said if he's not starting the other game, he'll likely be coming out of the bullpen. So look out for him. He's hopeful that he could get a major league contract or a minor league deal after pitching in Mexico. So Good we'll for see him. what happens. But he has absolutely awesome stuff. And I, I even told him, I said, I'm shocked the team hasn't brought you on. It's It's wild to me, but... With that being said, guys, we are out. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you guys for the post-game show. Peace, baby. It's heavy. Famous love. Yeah, I gotta keep it trendy on my soul. I'm the most selfish person that I know. Here we go down the rabbit hole. Got a couple carrots from my neck. Self-respect. When you out of line, you put yourself in check. Uh, they don't hear me. They don't, they don't, they don't hear me. My circle smaller than a cherry, yo. Cause this the company you kick. Stay woke. Please don't get caught slick. End up sewing what you rig. Know your worth. And don't sell cheap. The ghost is inside of me. Can't take it out of me. No matter where I've been.